Hi and welcome to Mr. Hamilton's Math Bites. This video is about the real number system and the domain and range. Today we're going to have three goals. The first goal is we want to know the types of numbers in the real number system. We want to represent them with an appropriate letter. The second goal that we have is we want to determine the domain and range of linear and quadratic functions and clearly write these in set notation. We're soon going to see other types of functions and, and give the domain and range of them as well. But knowing how to do it for linear and quadratic functions is going to give us the basis. And finally, we want to write the domain and range in set notation for discrete functions, that is functions that only exist at specific points, and functions with holes. So let's look at the real number system. The real number system is made up of natural numbers, as I've underlined for you there. And those are the numbers you learned when you first started counting. Whole numbers, which also include 0. And then also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. And integers. Integers are uh, any number from negative infinity to positive infinity, including 0, that are whole numbers. And then we have rational numbers. Rational numbers are fractions, very simply put. All right, And some fractions we can um, represent very nicely with uh, with a decimal that, so one half, for example, we can represent as 0.5, uh, but something like two thirds we represent by 0 0.66 repeated, and that never actually ends. But the difference between a rational number and an irrational number is that we have a way to write it as a fraction rather than something that cannot be written as a fraction and its decimal goes on forever. And so that brings us to irrational numbers. All of these irrational numbers have uh, decimals that go on forever. And they cannot be written as a fraction or a rational number. So irrational, it breaks our brain. <laughs> Altogether, these make up the real numbers. All right, they're numbers that we have a physical reality for. Now, there's also something called imaginary numbers. And imaginary numbers are something you're likely to use uh, a little bit in grade 12, but also in university. I did not believe that there was any possible application for imaginary numbers. And uh, when I was in university, I did math and physics, and I'd go to math class, and I'd learn about imaginary numbers, and I'd be going, why, why did we learn that? And then I'd go over to physics class, and we started doing quantum physics in second year, and we started investigating Schrodinger's wave equation, and we found out that imaginary numbers actually have application to a physical reality when we deal with things at the quantum or very, very tiny particle level. So pretty interesting. However, for this course, we're going to deal with real numbers only. And you'll notice down here that natural numbers are given a bolded N. Integers are given a bolded Z. Sometimes those are also referred to as a bolded I. You'll sometimes see that as well. Uh, rational numbers, again, those are the fractions, are given Q. Yes, we don't want to label that R because that would confuse us with real numbers that are given a bolded R. Next, we look at the domain and range, now that we have an understanding of what real numbers are. Domain is the set of all values of the independent variable of a relation, usually the x values. So the domain is the x values, all possible x values. The range is the set of all values of the dependent variable of the relation, usually the y values. In the case of function notation that we've been using, it's all the f of x values. So it's all the possible values of f of x. And here we come to something called set notation. We write the domain and range in set notation always. A possible domain for some function is this. The domain is equal to, and we have these brackets that aren't round brackets. They're brackets we haven't used a lot in the past. And it's very important that we draw it just like that. We're not drawing it like this. We're not drawing it like this. Those are different types of brackets. In this case, for set notation, we have to use the bracket, the little arrow in the middle. So this has x, and then it has a little epsilon sign, and then the folded r, and then a line, and then again x, and we have a greater than or equal to sign, and 3. So we start by listing the type of number, 
right? And so this says that x is a real number. And then the little line means such that, and then we have the conditions. x is greater than or equal to 3. So that epsilon sign that I've talked about is um, meaning a member of. And r is a symbol for real numbers. Let's just go down a little bit so you can read what's down there. This says, this which is in, the, in these brackets, says the set of all x's that are a member of r, the real numbers, such that x is greater than or equal to 3. More simply put, x is a real number from 3 upwards. If that didn't make sense to you, I encourage you to go back and, and watch that again and try to uh, even do your own uh, writing from the words. Read the sentence and try to write it out in that set notation. Let's do a few examples now. How to determine the domain and the range. The first situation is given the equation of a function. We want to ask ourselves a question. Does the equation represent a straight line or parabola or perhaps something else? little hint for you though is that today in this lesson we're only going to be dealing with the straight line or parabola. The domain is always for a linear function x is a set of all real numbers. And for the range for a linear function the range is always f of x is a set of all real numbers. The reason for this is the following. Consider this function. All right let's just say that something like f of x equals x plus 2, or minus 2, I guess, because it intersects below the x-axis. So like below the x -axis. So if f of x is x minus 2, you can see that this function is going to go forever in the x directions, so it's going to go forever to the left and to the right, and forever up and down. And so we have no restrictions. We have just the fact that x is the set of all real numbers, and then f of x, the y values, are the set of all real numbers. There are, however, two exceptions. The first is for a vertical line. Consider with me here, if we have a vertical line, say this is our y-axis and this is our x-axis, and this is going through the a value right there on the x-axis. In that case, the domain of this function has to simply be that x is equal to that value. But we first state that x is a set of all real numbers such that x is equal to a. Right? There's no other x value because it goes up and down directly below that x value. The range, we can see though, is the set of all real numbers because it's going to go up and down forever in the vertical direction. So up and down forever. For a horizontal line, that gives us a different situation. And let's look at the case here if I have uh, it going through A on the y-axis. The domain here is x is the set of all real numbers because it goes forever to the left and forever to the right. The range, we would say, is a set of all real numbers, but the restriction is that it's not going to go up and down from that value a. It's staying at a the whole time. So we would simply say that f of x, or we could say y as well if we wanted to, uh, is equal to a. So in the horizontal line, the statement below that says the domain is all values while the range is a single value. Going back to the vertical line in the sentence below that, we have the domain is a single value while the range is all values. For quadratic functions, it's a little bit different. The domain is always going to be x is a set of all real numbers. The reason for that is consider, again, a graph. Any parabola is going to continue going forever to the left and forever to the right. Yes, it's going to get steeper and steeper as it goes up, but it's always going to go, if we went on forever uh, up each way, we're also going to find that we go out to an infinite distance out each way to the sides. So now we ask ourselves, is the equation in the vertex form? And hopefully remember that vertex form is f of x is equal to a x minus h plus k. A is the vertical stretch or compression factor. H is the shift to the left or to the right. 
and K is the shift up or down. If it's in this function notation, if it's in this um, vertex form, then we can use the vertex and the direction of opening to determine the range. So in general, if A is greater than zero, all right, that means it opens up, then the range is going to be this. F of X is a set of all real numbers such that F of X is greater than or equal to that K value because opening up and the K shifts it up or down. If the A value is less than zero, that means it opens down, which means that the notation would be F of X is a set of all real numbers such that F of X would be less than or equal to K because it's opening down from that K value. Let's do a couple of examples. Try pausing the video and trying these yourself first. The first example says state the domain and range for each. So f of x equals 3x minus 4. This is a linear function. And we know that if a function is linear, then the domain is equal to x as a set of all real numbers. And we know that the range is equal to f of x as a set of all real numbers. There are no restrictions for a linear relation. For a quadratic relation, as we have, which I hope is obvious to you in the second case, we have the a value being less than zero, so it's going to open down. And the k value being equal to one. So that means it's been shifted up by one. So very quickly we can draw a sketch of that. We can say if this is the value of one on the y axis, then it's also going to be moved to the right by four. That's not necessarily important for the domain and range here, um, but it's going to look something like this very quick sketch opening down with a maximum value of y equals 1. So we could say there that the domain we have x being a set of all real numbers such that nothing right because we know any parabola has to have x values going forever to the left and forever to the right. The range though will have a restriction. In this case we'd say f of x is a set of all real numbers such that f of x, again, it's opening down, so it's less than or equal to that k value, which is 1 in this case. Less than or equal to. Make sure that that's clear, because the k value can also be part of the range. The second situation that we have is if we're given the graph of a function. If the graph is a straight line, be careful it's not vertical or horizontal. We already talked about that earlier. If it's a parabola, we want to locate the vertex and use the direction of opening to help determine the domain range. I actually think that this is easier than doing it from the equation. I hope you find the same. So let's state the domain and range of each. The domain of the following function is x is a set of all real numbers. It's a parabola. And the range of this function, f of x is a set of all real numbers, such that well, the k value is negative 4, and it opens up. So we would say f of x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Over here for the domain and range, the linear function, the domain and range have to both be without any restrictions. And last but not least, I want to look quickly at a case of a discrete function and one with holes. Now what we have here in this first situation is x being the values of negative 3 up to 3, but they're all integer values. So we would say that x is a set of all real integers. We could use z or, or folded i, such that x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and less than or equal to 3. And that's what I've done. The same thing applies to the y values, but the y values are from negative 2 to positive 4. So we've written them like that. In the second case here, we see that the domain is between negative 5 and 11, but it doesn't include negative 5 because there's a hole there, but it does include 11. And we see that f of x is only 2 and 6. 